Hi, I'm Rocco Steno and welcome to Storymakers. Today we have Don Brown with us. Thanks for joining us, Don. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. I love being here. So, Thank you. How do you describe yourself, Don? Do you descri describe yourself as a graphic novelist, not a, a, a creator of graphic books? I identify myself as an author illustrator who now has embraced um, graphic nonfiction. Because graphic technically nonfiction. nonfiction, because novel is fiction. So and I'm, a, right. I'm, a, I'm a nonfiction guy. Your latest in the big ideas that changed the world series is Machines That Think. Mm. Machines That Think. The book is a story about the history of computing and computers. Now computers become so powerful that we think of them as thinking on their own. Now technically that's not true, but it's still a way to um, describe the, the way computing is, has evolved over hundreds and hundreds of years. When you speak into uh, a Google or a Siri type of uh, device, that device can figure out what you're saying and fulfill a, some kind of task for you. So we like call somebody for me. Call somebody or to text somebody or go to a particular website or even turn on a television or turn on the lights or turn on a particular um, TV show. In 128 pages, you cover the history of uh, computers starting way back with this fellow that I have to honestly say I did not no. Mohammed Musa al khwarizmi He lived in the Middle East and he was a scientist. We remember him because of his connection to, first of all, um, Arabic numerals. Arabic numerals, one, two, three, four, those things, supplanted Roman numerals. You know, and can you imagine having to add and subtract with Roman numerals? It was a good thing that we got Arabic numerals. Khwarizmi knew about it and he wrote about it. And then afterwards, people in Europe discovered Quarzimi's writings about this new kind of numerals. And that since he was Arabic, they assumed that it was his, but it really wasn't. So now it's referred to as Hindu Arabic numbers. Without them, our lives would be entirely different. And he's just one of the many, many yeah. people that are talked about in your book. And these innovators are from all over the world. They certainly are. Nobody owns science. Nobody owns the evolution of science or the advancement of science. Everybody contributes in some fashion. And their different genders contribute also. There's a lady called Ada Lovelace. And she foresaw software, you know, programming. She foresaw all that more than 100 years before we could actually do it. And she even actually came to believe that math and computing was kind of a poetry in itself. She's referred to as the mother of um, programming. Right. And this is back in the 1800s. So another interesting story was about the uh, French gentleman, uh, Chagard? Chacard. Oh, Chacard, yes. Yeah. Back then they had, uh, automa they had looms that would make fabric and the fabric would have patterns on it. And because looms, or hand-driven to do a, a very elaborate pattern was very difficult. So Mr. Jacquard figured a way to automate it. And he used punch cards that had holes in it. And the mechanisms would see the holes or not see the holes. And you know the mechanism would either enter the hole or not. And that operation could actually create a very elaborate design. That was picked up by the computer people and afterwards. You know, I don't know how old you are, but I can remember when early IBM computers had punch cards. They used the exact same thing. There was a piece of paper with holes in it, and that allowed the computer to see and do things just by the holes in the paper. Drawing those machines, I'm assuming you went back and did yeah, some research? I, yes, I did the research. It's not like they were in a case. You saw all the innards of it. You know, once we hit the 20th century, machines are enclosed, you know, and you're drawing, drawing you know, boxes with dials on it. Right, or right. So, right. And that made it a little bit easier. So what do you think the most important invention was okay. that moved, moved things along? I think the most important was the transistor, invented in 1947 by a couple of guys named Bartrain and Bardeen. That made an electronic switch that was so fast it could move at the speed of electricity, and we know how fast that is. And then there was a guy named Robert Noyce in 1959 who figured out to get the transistor onto a silicon chip. And those silicons were manufactured at first in California mm -hmm. in a place that we now know as Silicon Valley. Uh -huh. That's why it's called Silicon Valley. And there's something called Moore's Law. 
It's not a real law, but they call it that. And it says computers can get twice as fast every two years. And that's held true since the 1970s. That's why we have machines that are so fast and the, and the transistors are so small that you can get them into an automobile. And that automobile can have a computer that can help it just drive its way down a highway without a person helping. The smartphone in your pocket has more computing power than the module that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin took to the moon. There's more, you have more power in your pocket than those guys had going to the moon. Again, computers are getting smaller, faster, connected to the internet and Wi-Fi. They'll transform the world in ways we can't even imagine. You said people can't imagine, but we can imagine. Just yeah. like all the people in this book did imagine and they acted on what they were thinking about. I would like you to imagine a machine that you would like to see in the future and tell us what it would do, just like all the various yeah. machines. Just because we can't think of stuff. That's right. You guys can think of something. I'm sure they can, yeah, yeah. yes. So what do you think the next machine will be that will change oh, the world? Oh, geez, somebody asked me that today and I was kind of stumped. I think blind people will see. I think deaf people will hear. I think paralyzed people will walk. And it's all, you know, that, those kind of things. You probably can think of things that we couldn't even conceive of. You could, uh, some angle that only you would know. And that's, that's the kind of fascinating thing. What those people out there, how you're gonna take all those elements and you're going to do something spectacular. You will be the next Thomas Edison. You will be the next uh, Bartrine and Bardeen or, and Noyce. You'll be the next Ada Lovelace. You'll be the next Charles Babbage. You're going to go to Mars. You may go, you're going to explore the galaxies. You know, I'm a little bit jealous of you because I won't be able to go with you. But um, we're counting on you. I learned so much from uh, your book. Thank yeah. you for writing it and creating it. Thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. Remember, until next time, read a book in any format. <laughs>